Back now to our top story, the mounting efforts to track down the source of several national security classified leaks that have both Democrats and Republicans now calling for investigations. Of course, the reporters who broke the stories know the sources of this sensitive information. Should they be compelled to divulge their sources since, after all, it is a crime to leak state secrets. Legendary uh, Watergate reporter Carl Bernstein weighed on all that today, urging caution. Take a listen. First, you got to be very careful about creating a witch hunt uh, for sources and a witch hunt in which you go after reporters, because now more than ever, we need real reporting on this presidency, on national security, on all these areas, and the press is not the problem here. Let's bring in our legal panel, Robert Schalk is, and Joey Jackson, both defense attorneys, former prosecutors. Robert, uh, lay out the law for me here. Can, can reporters just say, I don't have to tell you, judge? In, in a criminal case, no. Uh, in 1972, the Supreme Court ruled on this, and they ruled that there is no absolute uh, shield. There's no absolute privilege to not divulge a source, but there's a qualified privilege, meaning the government... What does that mean? The government can't go on a fishing expedition. They can't just ask questions because they right. have questions. They have to prove a nexus between the information the government is seeking and the source that the reporter is but looking look, to protect. But look, I mean, here there's a nexus, right, Joey? I mean, you there just is. go to the reporters who reported the story and say, who was your source? Because that's the person who was leaking sure. the information. You know, Greg, it's a vexing question, and Bob is right on on the law. And look, it's important that people, when they go to reporters, feel that they can tell them information, and that information could be protected and privileged. Otherwise, what's going to happen? People are not going to talk, right. and there's going to be limitations on what's said and what we know. And that and reporter as a result, is finished if they give oh, up their absolutely. source. Oh, absolutely. One hundred percent, Greg. As a result of that, I mean, that's in, in your profession, all you have is your integrity. So there's a lot to be said for not revealing, not divulging anything. However, getting back to your qualified privilege, Bob, we're talking about national security issues. And so the question now becomes, is what you know, should it be outweighed, and is national security paramount such that we can get to the source and perhaps save them, protect yeah. lives? You know, Dianne Feinstein, who's on the Intel Committee, longtime uh, senator on Capitol Hill, said, look, and a Democrat, said, look, this is an avalanche of leaks. It, it threatens national security. It jeopardizes lives. Absolutely. There is a, one of the leaks involved a now we know double agent who was working inside Al Qaeda and there was a foiled bomb threat. I mean, if that person's name, it, we're talking about the United States not being able to work with other countries because they're not going to trust us anymore. Yeah. That's a problem. And, you know, Greg, listen, 40 states, as we know, have these shield laws to protect reporters the from feds. divulging, but not the federal government. The Justice Department, though, has very clear guidelines on what they do. If they First, they look for alternative measures to get the information. If they can't do that, then obviously they negotiate with the press. If they can't do that, then they go to, to a subpoena. So you have a federal government that is understanding of the press's right to be free and to be right. independent. It's a balancing act that's very hard to manage. You know, I've been trading emails with our colleague, Judy Miller here at Fox News, who, of course, when she was at the New York Times and was involved in reporting about the Valerie Plame CIA leak, went to jail for three long yeah. months because she refused to give up her source. The judge tossed her in jail, Bob. And the only reason in the end she got out of jail was because Scooter Livy gave her a waiver, finally, to, to release the information. Well, if you're gonna, if you're gonna take a hard line here, and uh, Eric Holder's taking a hard line, if there was criminal conduct taken, uh, and the reporter's gonna refuse to turn it over, that's the punishment. Uh, and it may seem unfair, and, and I, I know dealing you know, with the media, it's tough. Yeah. That, you know, that's exactly what will happen, Greg, as we know very well, is that a civil contempt order will be issued by a judge, and you'll have a choice. The choice is reveal the information or, in the alternative, go to jail. What about Some, obstruction of justice? That, that's a major issue. I mean, if you're issue. hiding information about a crime, you know, Joey, that's obstruction. It is, but technically you're not hiding information. You're withholding it because you have ethical standards as a reporter to protect people who give you information. Why else, Greg, would they give you the information other than the belief that you will, it will be safe with you and you will not divulge where it is? So it's difficult to charge them with obstruction. However, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw that. How do you think this is going to end up, Bob? It's going to be difficult, and I think what, one of the reasons is the two U.S. attorneys uh, that are in charge with looking into this are reporting directly to Eric Holder, is reporting to the president, and they may be yeah. looking into the White House here. The question is going to be how much power are these two guys yeah. going to have to look into this? So Isn't there it? an inherent conflict of interest here that jeopardizes the integrity and independence of this investigation? I mean, Joey... 
Eric Holder reports to the president. Right. He appointed these two right. U.S. attorneys who report to him, for goodness sakes. Your findings better be consistent with what my boss wants. I right. understand the conflict, and as a result of that, I think what we'll see is some measure of independence. We might see, perhaps, an independent investigation separate and apart from U.S. justice. But do you know, Bob, the problem is you appoint an independent counsel or a special prosecutor, and that takes, like, what, four or five, six years. Exactly. And right. everything that people forget, and there's a new leak, or there's a new story that everyone's, right. a new hot topic. But right. that's not a bad thing for five, six years, if you're the president, of course. Uh, yeah, if you're the president, because <laughs> you're out of office. Exactly. But, and even if you win re-election. All right, Bob Schock and uh, Joey Jackson, good to see you.